this is going to be in two verses like we were last week. This is going to end, uh, or this will be the ending of last week's kind of message about being the temple of the Lord. Now, when we come in this evening, uh, there was made mention um, about the volcano and needing to preach something along those lines. And, you know, there's been times where we may have something like that up and the Lord uh, lead that way. But uh, I think really what, what stands out in my mind here this evening is when you look at this volcano behind me, if you can even see it behind me, I guess you can. I'm, I'm like I'm a monster up here. But with, if you can see the volcano behind me, is think about your temp, your your emotions, and think about your temper, um, and how it may overflow and it may spill like a volcano. And I think that is the illustration tonight. I didn't really think of being a no illustration at all until someone said it coming in the door, but. Uh, that is kind of a, a thought that goes along. And when you look up here this season, uh, uh, just think of that because we've been looking at we are the temple of God. And if the temple of God is defiled in any way or the church is defiled in any way, it can happen so quickly. Just like how this volcano behind me can erupt and so quickly things change. I'll be honest with you, uh, when, when something erupts, uh, that, that volcano, it ain't ever going to be the same. And, and so so much so goes with the church because if we defile ourselves and defile this temple of God, there's consequences. And I'll be honest with you, the same way that lava, that molten lava is going to spew out, if, if we defile ourselves or, or spew out things toward others, hatred, bitterness, jealousy, malice, um, just uh, sin, it, it's going to leave. It's going to leave an imprint. It will hurt others as well, and it's going to leave a change. It's going to leave a permanent change, and that's what we're going to be looking at: is defiling the temple this evening. We looked last week at how we that we are the temple, and it's the dwelling of the of the spirit. But look at verse sixteen and seventeen. First Corinthians three sixteen it says, "Know ye not that you are the temple of God, that that the spirit of God dwelleth in you." If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye? Again, the verse we're looking at is verse 17. If any man defile the temple. I think right now, sitting in the pew, you're thinking of somebody on the outside. If somebody just comes into the church and defiles the church or defiles the temple. But the man that you're looking at might as well be the man in the mirror. If the man defiles the temple, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? You are the temple. If that temple is defiled, uh, it's not good. But let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you help us, Lord. Touch our voice here this evening, Lord, and you just touch our hearts and our minds, Lord. To where, uh, it's not a lengthy sermon by no means, but Lord, I think it's got quality in it, Lord, and just help us. I draw closer to you, but most of all, guard ourselves. I mean, really guard ourselves by, uh, from our own our own flesh to where we don't spew out things that we shouldn't spew out. We really are cautious with the words that we say. Uh, so often, Lord, as you do in my own life, that there's things that will maybe come to my tongue, but they don't come out of the mouth because there's something on the inside that says, whoa, don't do that and don't say that. Lord, you Help us guard ourselves. Help us be that temple that you desire us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> but last week we looked at verse 16, the dwelling. And it goes hand in hand, so I'm going to go back to that just a minute. <coughs> Paul's writing to the church, and within the church, uh, he's telling them that the, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in the church. Verse 16 said, Know ye not that you are the temple of God? So know that you are the temple. And he's speaking towards the church. The church is the temple. And it says at the end of verse 17, and you sandwiched all together, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, which temple are ye? Ye are the temple. So you see that uh, from the beginning of verse 16 to the closing of 17, that we are the temple. And in verse 16, he begins by saying, Know ye not. In other words, you ought to know that you're the temple. And out of everything that's been said and done in, in 1 Corinthians uh, so far, you ought to know. Now, I spent a lot of time last week on that, and I'm not going to go into that. But he, he all throughout uh, 1 Corinthians, it's 
the very beginning, even since the very, very beginning statements that you're called to be saints, you're not being the saints you ought to be, but you're called to be that. All along, he's been saying, no, you're not. You ought to know that you're the temple. This is a reminder again uh, that you are the temple. But it's not nothing new. It's just a, uh, he's not saying nothing new. We said that last week. It's, he's just telling them what they are, and they are the temple of God. Uh, it's just some facts that they, they were aware of. They just need to be reminded of. But we looked at that point, no, you're not quite uh, in depth last week, so we're not going to look at that again. <coughs> but Paul really summed it up really nicely, and he said, there's no reason for you not to know. There's no reason for you not to know that you are the temple of God. The believers are that temple. And uh, specifically last week, if you remember, we looked at those words, ye are. And, and it showed that Paul, that ye are, he's, he's, he's looking at it in a plural sense. He's looking at it as a whole group of believers. It's kind of like saying this, hey, you all are the church. You are, you are all the temple. You're the temple. You make up the church of Roaring Creek Missionary Baptist Church, and you are the temple. Now, Paul references this same reference. We looked at this last week in 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 19. It says, What know ye not that your body is the temple? And he, I think he goes from a broad sense here in 1 Corinthians 3 to a specific individual sense in verse number uh, in 1 Corinthians 6. Uh, to a, to very narrows it down to the individual, but right now he's speaking to the church. the ch The church is God's temple. The church is God's dwelling place. The church is where the Holy Spirit resides. It's where uh, it's a place that needs to be guarded, and that is uh, and that is us. That is you. That is your body. That is God's temple. But he's looking at it, speaking of it, concerning the church. The church has a responsibility, and I'm telling you, it gets so deep right here, and I, I can't put it in words uh, what it means to really know that the Lord has called us. He's called us to be that temple, and, it, and it's the church's responsibility. The church has such a role. This Bible school is not just a Bible school and let somebody else do it. Our role, we have to reach the community. We have to reach the lost. We have to make connections this week. If we don't, the church is not doing what the church is supposed to do. So the church has this responsibility, and we are the temple of God. And we looked at that last week, uh, just going over that as a reminder. Now, <coughs> tonight, we look, or last week we looked at the dwelling of the, in the temple, or the dwelling in the church of Corinth, which is the Holy Spirit. But now I want to look at the, the, the filing. We looked at the dwelling in verse 16, but now you're getting to the defiling. Now, nobody likes to hear this. Let's just be honest. Nobody likes to hear of the, of the, the kind of the rules or the, uh, the, the, the negative. We like to hear of all the positive. But tonight, uh, and it's a good thing last week to know that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside. But with that and with all the good that the Holy Spirit is inside us, comes some consequences. It comes some requirements on our part. And he talks about the defiling. Look at verse 17. He says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. There in verse 17. So there's a seriousness. I'm telling you, church, I, I can't put it in words. What I feel in my heart is, is what a seriousness it is to be the church, but what is a ser what seriousness it is to defile the church. Now you say, well, what does that mean? Well, a person that defiles the church is going to have consequences. There ain't no doubt about it. Hey, some things growing up, you didn't know if you'd get a consequence or not. But when you defile the church, there's going to be consequences. Because this is God's church. It's, and there is, there's no not having consequences. There are consequences to defiling the temple. And, and that's what he's saying here. So there's two words mentioned here in verse 17. <coughs> he says, if any man defile, see that word defile, the temple of God, that's what the man is doing, they're defiling. He says, him shall God destroy. So two words there starting with a D, defile and destroy. The thing that I 
think it's interesting. It's both of those words, defile and destroy, come from the same Greek word. And I'm even going to try to pronounce it. We don't know Greek anyway, but here's the thing. They come from the same word. I, and I believe it's as simple as this. Is what you what we do and how what what we uh, do as a church or however we defile God, the same destruction, the same destroy is going to come upon us. Whatever we bring in is going to come to a head at some point. In other words, uh, it, whatever you may have heard this in the Bible, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's as true as it gets. It, you're not going to bring in one thing and not get something else. That's just not the way it goes. If you plant some seeds and plant a plant, whatever you plant, that's what you're going to get. Well, guess what? If you defile the church, the same word for defile is destroyed. The same thing is going to come upon us. And you say, well, what's he saying there, preacher? Well, I believe he's saying that troublemaking or in the church destroys the spirit of unity. I want you to listen to that. Troublemaking in the church destroys the spirit of unity and the love that's in the church. What it does is it corrupts, it destroys, it does that, uh, it's bringing in that. What, what should we feel when we come into church? God's love, God's mercy, power, uh, his praises. That's what church ought to be about. But if you bring in destruction, if we bring in uh, defilement, if we bring in these other things, corruption, well, you, it's, it's here. You brought it in. What does it bring? It brings what it brought in, what you brought in. It's going to bring the same thing to us. Whatever we <coughs> whatever we sow, that will we reap. And just like that volcano behind me, so quickly we can spew off. And so quickly things can the water can go outside the riverbank so quickly. But so quickly things can get out of control. But the thing, same thing that we bring in is the same thing that's brought upon us. Note there's a punishment. It's not specifically described here, though. But there is a punishment. It says, if, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. In other words, if someone defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. It doesn't say... God might destroy. Doesn't say that God, um, uh, God uh, maybe will destroy. It says God shall destroy. And I believe it's to this point that honestly, it's, if we was uh, to go that go and, and, and eat us a big big fat, there's calories that come with it. In other words, there's something that comes with whatever we put in our bodies, whatever we bring upon in the church. It's gonna it's gonna manifest itself as well. In other words, you can, we can't whatever we, we, we digest, it's it's gonna come out. We're, it's it's gonna come out to it's gonna come to the surface. It will come to a head. And he's saying that that it's gonna destroy. If someone defiles the temple, then we're gonna destroy. Now again, this temple and such a beautifully last week we looked and it it's not necessarily one person, but it could be one person, as we've seen in First Corinthians six. But he's speaking to the church in general. And he's saying, hey, if the church brings in a mess, uh, God would have it defiles the temple, defiles what God has set apart as holy, and it's no longer holy, then that shall God destroy. Destroy means wrecked, torn apart, ripped, and devastated. See, here's the thing. So often, so often we don't think about what we say. We don't think about what we our actions sometimes of what we do. But the same way that we bring apart this, bring on this destruction, and he's going to do the same thing and destroy us, destroy, wreck, torn apart. But what we don't realize is the same things as those simple words that we may say. This church is torn apart. Now, it's going to be torn and destroyed in two ways. And I believe he says that here in the scripture. Troublemakers can can make it impossible, give you two ways that there's, there's going to be uh, defiling of this temple, two things that take place. And, and the temple of God as a church is destroyed. There's two ways here. It says in verse uh, 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. I believe one thing here is it makes it impossible for the spirit to work. It makes it very hard, I should say, for the. it can make it impossible. Um, God can do anything. I'm not saying that the Spirit 
uh, can't do anything. But I'm just saying it makes it very hard for this, almost impossible for the spirit to work where there is uh, this, uh, this, this attitude of, of in the church of disgust, a spirit of ill will, an unwillingness uh, to, to grow toward God, um, grumbling, griping, complaining, quarreling, um, the, the arguing, all those types of things, they, they bring about a destruction of fellowship. It, bring, it separates the unity. And you may say, man, this is serious business. Absolutely. I told you it's serious business. It's a hard thing for me to preach this evening. Because honestly, we've all, that is our nature to grumble. It's our nature to complain. But when we bring that into the church, what we do not realize is you're bringing it right, you're, you're, you're getting God involved when we bring it to church because this is his place. I'm not saying anybody's doing this. If you're doing it, you just mind the Lord. I don't know. But all I'm saying is uh, it, it's, a, it's a serious thing to defile the church. You say, why? Because we're one with the Spirit. You're one with the Spirit. And if you break that unity, you've broken that fellowship with the Spirit. The Bible says we can quench the Spirit. And I'm not getting into a deep, long, I believe it's simple as this. If we have sin in our life, we grumble and complain and we have sin. There's some things that, 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 that we just let bother us and, and we quarrel about it, we argue about it, we complain about it, uh, we won't drop it, uh, need to move on about it. These things that take place, it, it makes it impossible for the Spirit to work. In other words, we're looking at the, half, the glass half empty. You're, we're never going to get it full never going to get full and let it run over overflow and help somebody else. The spirit, uh, it, hurt, it, it makes it impossible for that spirit to work in the church. But not only that, so it makes it hard for the impossible for the spirit to work. It also can split the church. So when you read this in verse 17, a man defiled the temple. See, the Spirit should flow, should flow in this place. Someone has something on their heart, a song, anything. That God's Spirit, ought, we ought to be in one with God in this place. So if we defile the temple, him shall God destroy, is what verse 17 says. But not only that, if, if we bring a mess into the church, uh, the troublemakers can end up splitting the church. Because see, here's the thing. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody does. However, you don't have to come become opinionated. I'm going to say it again. We all have opinions, but here's the thing. In our flesh, there ain't a single one of us that's alive. There ain't nobody. And that's where we have to guard ourselves. Because if we become opinionated, there ain't nobody in here alive. There ain't nobody. We're not a lot alive. We ain't. But at the same time, we're very much alike because we have the Spirit of God living on the inside. That's the difference. But you throw out the Spirit of God, we're very different. But where there is the Spirit of God, your spirit is buried with my spirit, and there's a oneness there. And, and, but with, when that's split, it can really hurt the church. You do realize that when we do have opinions and they're on the inside, a lot of times they do come out on the outside. I mean, sometimes we'll have this opinion or we'll have something bothering us on the inside. You can keep it on the inside all day long, but I'll tell you this. So often it's written on your faces. As a pastor, I know when things are bothering you. You don't have to come tell me. We don't have to always have a, a, uh, <coughs> a meeting in the office or something. I, you, everybody knows when something's bothering you. We do. Uh, but so often those opinions will come to the surface. But not only that, our opinions, we've got to be careful of this, they will come to the surface in our in our just just our behavior, our faith, our faces, our mannerisms. But not only that, our opinions will come out it, just like that law, they go first. It'll just come out. Man, how easy that can be. How easy something can be said. You know, I've been around people. 
And I, I don't think some people really care. Uh, they don't guard themselves. It, they just kind of uh, say what they think or they just say what's on their mind. You've got to be guarded. We have to guard ourselves because we're not ourselves anyway. We're Christ. And we're not heirs to say what we want and do how we want. But what happens is if we have this on the inside, it's going to come on the outside eventually, either our faces or manners, but it could be outbursts. It could be something in our, our feelings, something that we say, some kind of uh, negative comment. But the result is what we don't realize. And this is where we gotta, we're bringing this thing, or we're landing this thing right here. What we don't realize is well, how much it hurts the church. It begins to divide the church. It begins to separate the church. Well, I don't think that was right. Will you pray about it and keep yourself right? Because I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm as big enough mess to try to keep up with as anybody in here. And if I just keep up with myself, that's enough. And, I, and I've learned that even past. I mean, I want somebody to do this or want somebody to do that or, I, 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 or you get excited, somebody starts coming and all of a sudden they quit showing up. I don't know. I, I can only be me and I can only control me. But if we do all we can do to control us, I believe we'd be in a much better place. Because look at verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. If the church defiles the temple of God, then what's defiling, preacher? Well, it's those outbursts. It's, well, I don't think we should have done that. Why, why did we do this? What, what, what's the point in that? We defile the temple of God in the same manner God, what does it say? In the same, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye? In other words, we're God's temple. And if and and you say, well, preacher, what's the alternative uh, to God destroying and, and us uh, getting to a place of destruction? What's the alternative? Here's the alternative. Follow the Spirit. Listen to that. In other words, if it gets to the tip of our tongue and, and we know we ought not say it, just boom, don't say it. Because I'll be honest with you, it's, it's hard. And it feels good at the moment to let that lock us few out. But I'll tell you this. Words, words can, can, it can cut deep. Church hurt can be some of the greatest hurt that we possibly can, can have. And I believe one reason that church hurt can be so hard is because one, it's, it's, it's us and someone else. But we've got a third party in the mix, and it's God. And we're no longer our own anyway. And if we're supposed to be living for him, and he says even in 17, for the temple of God is holy, it ought to be holy. Why do we do this? Hey, it's holy. That's not holy. He's going too long. He's to it's holy. I'm trying not to be long. I'm ready to be done too. But it's holy. Just be holy. Another offering, just give what, what the Lord allows you to give. Just give. The Lord loves a cheerful gift. Just give. I'm surprised yesterday out there working. I mean, me and my thought it, but I'm so thankful they didn't spew it out like lava. I was walking around, and I know we've got a lot going on. But I'm just trying to keep a vision and keep things going on. Thoughts that, hey, I know what needs to go next. I do. I do. But I also know there's things after what comes next that needs to be done. And I know them men would love to have said it, but I appreciate them not saying it. I, I know when I say it, I was about ready to hear them say, just shut up, we'll get one thing done, and then we'll get to the next one, you know. I know it. Because I'm out here and I'm saying, I'm seeing, I'm just trying to get, trying to share what I see to everybody else so we all see some things that need to be done. And But, but in, in in all reality, we may think those things, we may have those thoughts, but it, but in the grand scheme of things, we do want the best for our church. We do. And even after I say them, I, I say, man, I know that seems like a lot, but we've not accomplished this yet, but we've got to have keep a vision of things that has to be done. 
So what's the alternative? We've got to follow the Spirit. It's the Spirit that alone that brings the fellowship. It's the Spirit alone that draws us and binds us together. It's the Spirit alone, the Spirit of God, that brings unity. It brings oneness. It's the Spirit of God that how this many different people from this many different uh, interests, that we're all different. I'm telling you, I don't know that, and, I, and I'm not trying to paint a picture, but I'm just uh, that we're all uh, misfits or something like that. I'm just saying that we're all so different. We watch and the different things that uh, have different interests, different hobbies. But all I'm saying is that one thing that brings us together has got to be the one thing that brings us together when we uh, come together here at church. And it's got to be God. And it's got to be a spirit-filled and spiritual fellowship. All of us, as, as unique as we are, we're all one because of the Spirit of God. And that's why it says the, the temple of God, verse 17, the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? We are his temple. How does the church accomplish anything being that different? God. That's the only thing we do. That's the only way we can do it. God. We've got to allow his spirit to work. Philippians 2 and 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but lowliness of mind. You know what I picture there when I read that? I picture something so low that when we make decisions, it's in such faith that we can't figure it out while we're doing some things we do. We know it needs to be done, but in lowliness of mind, I'm getting low, but I'm looking up and depending on him and just having faith in him and all that we do. 2 Timothy 2 and 4 says we should not strive but be gentle and Upon all men, apt to teach, to be gentle. How much of the Bible is talking about guarding ourselves and being being gentle and being calm, being meek, being I don't know, I picture Jesus so often wanting to just snap sometimes in the Bible, don't you? But he never I just picture him being just so gentle, so meek. <coughs> James 3 6 says, And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So the tongue among the members, if it, it defileth the whole body, it setteth the fire the course of nature, and it shall set on fire of hell. Over and over, the Bible warns the church of just being the church, and a Christian just being a Christian, and Christians following after him, and that's what we've got to do. So verse 17 again, that's our verse tonight. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are you? We are his. Say, well, what what did you mean here tonight? <coughs> All I mean is, is, I believe this: if we defile the temple, and it's as simple as just our attitude, our behavior, our unwillingness, our grumbling, our complaining, it's so easy. But what it does, it it hurts our fellowship in the church. Because we are so different, it hurts our fellowship with God. We've got to have God to have fellowship. Because we are the temple of God. And we don't want him shall God destroy standing off the page here. It's a serious business. Being the church is serious business. Being saved and accepting the blood of Jesus is serious business. Walking in the fullness of that spirit is serious business. So easily we can snap. So easily we can go after that flesh. But let's guard ourselves. Guard ourselves because what Paul's warning the church of Corinth goes back again. I'm going to just close with this. It goes back to the very first verse. And I don't know why it just stands out to me. I think it's because of me. I know I'm not what I always ought to be. I know it. I worry sometimes. And I, I think things, say things I, I ought not say. A lot of times I just say it to myself or try to keep it away from me. I don't just, but the thing is, in, in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, he says you're called to be saints. God has called you to be something. You might not be what you're supposed to be right now, but I'm telling you there's coming a day where we will be what we're supposed to be, that we will be holy, we will be perfect, we will be pure, but until then I'm going to do all I can 
feed that spirit, to, to grow in the spirit, to grow in the Lord, where I'm not feeding that flesh, where I don't, I just don't, I don't want to be the thing. I don't want to be the hindrance that holds the Roman Creek Missionary Baptist Church back. Wouldn't that be awful? The day of judgment and find out that we somehow were supposed to have done this or done that and that we were holding the church back. But I'm telling you, the church of Corinth was in a mess. And it's just a reminder tonight how our bodies are the temple, but the church is the temple. The temple of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God ought to move in this place. But we can't defile it and not have consequences. The same way that we defile it, it's the same way that same thing's going to come upon us. And we are the temple. God is holy because we are the temple. Which temple are you? We are his temple. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I like to be reminded. I like to be corrected every now and then. I'd rather be corrected and know I'm in the tent. I'm part of the, the building process of God and just get corrected every now and then to be lost and headed to hell and just living how I want and acting how I want. I'd, I'd rather have this any day. But all that is a reminder for us, church, and just guard ourselves. Guard ourselves. But I tell you, in a church our size, it seems like sometimes a smaller spark make a bigger blaze in a small church. Then in the same regard, a smaller person on fire for God can make a bigger impact in a small church as well. Let's just be all we possibly can be for the Lord. And just when you lay your head down at night, just say uh, that you, you've done everything you can for the Lord, but also that, you, that we've not hindered or impeded the progress of, the, of God at all. Heavenly Father, Lord, this is just kind of a checkup, Lord, and we need this from time to time to guard ourselves. We're still wrapped in flesh. We're still clothed in flesh. And, and Lord, we, we all come short. There ain't a single one of us that can't say that we don't sometimes say, my gosh, we got this going on after this. We all grumble. We all complain. We all do that. But, Lord, if we could just wrap our minds around the fact that it's all for you and all for your glory. And we can wrap our minds around the fact that what we do and what we say truly matters. We may be in the right for what we say. We may believe wholeheartedly what we're saying. It feels good to be coming out. If we're tearing somebody down or tearing something apart, no matter how good it makes that flesh feel, there'll be consequences. There'll be death come upon our own lives. In other words, it may just be sin and that death of unity between our walk with you and our fellowship with you. But Lord, what a scary thing to think that that could creep in an entire church. And the church of Corinth had a lot going on, a lot going on for them that they, God had called them to be, but they had a lot going on against them. <coughs> Lord, in this day, don't let us ever lower the bar. Don't let us ever lower our standard and think that what we're doing is okay because what the world's doing is okay. Lord, let us uh, strive to be all that we can be for you. And, and just, Lord, let us honor you with our life, with our walk, with our actions, with our, 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 our emotions. Let us follow you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And, Lord, just let this just be a, a reminder. Just let it be an encouragement. Because, honestly, Lord, I'd rather be a part of your temple. I'd rather be a part of the body of Christ than anything under the sun. I'm thankful I can lay my head down at night and know that I'm not going to hell. I know without a shadow of a doubt. And I'm thankful for that. But there's a consequence to that, that I've got to live for you. I've got to shine for you because others need to be brought into the fold. And that's our job and that's our role. If I can't live, I don't want to do what I want. And defile the body. Defile that temple. And that take place. Lord, you help our church. Lord, help this message take root just help us help us be strong help us be a, a strong church for you in jesus name